Now let's go to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians 5. I know y'all y'all stood a whole lot longer than you usually stand, so I'm going to let y'all sit down. So I said, what's going on? How long is this worship going to be? And how long are they going to pray and then? Yeah, go. this is vintage right direction. Galatians 5th chapter, starting in verse 1. And it reads, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again. Look at somebody say, don't go back. Don't go back to that. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand in the liberty of the freedom where Christ has made you free. And don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. 1 Timothy 6 and verse 12. Also, it says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and have, has professed a good profession before many witnesses. The will of God, y'all, you need to understand, is settled in heaven. Okay, the will of God, it, there's no struggle about the will of God in heaven. Um, Psalm 119 and verse 89 says, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. What God says, what he wants, his standards are settled, established, never to be revoked, can't be debated, can't be undone in heaven. Yet the will of God is not automatic. The will of God must be fought for here on earth. It's established in heaven but you're going to have to fight to have the will of God done in your life here on earth. And so when I was thinking about this whole concept about fighting, I happened to come across, I stumbled across this, this thing uh, on, uh, on Twitter. I saw a, a headline come up, and uh, I followed it through, and there was a video attached with it. Actually, there's about three of the videos. Uh, I think I sent our media department at least maybe two of them, so I'm not sure which one they're going to show. But I want you to see about See this 93-year-old woman who determined she's going to keep on fighting. Thank you. Now for our Low right. Country Report. Don't have that ready. Go ahead. 93-year-old Hilton Head woman whose family has ties to the Civil War generation says developers are trying to force her to sell her land, starting with what she calls a frivolous lawsuit. As WSAB's Andrew Davis tells us, now the community is backing her fight. This porch has been part of Josephine Wright's family and her home for more than 30 years. But developers now say it's part of their property, even though it's 22 feet from the road that they're building on. And they filed a lawsuit to try to take it from her. I've been pretty much of a fight all of my life. And even at 93, this grandmother to 40, great-grandmother to 50, and great-great-grandmother to 16 more says she's ready to fight for her family's past and future. It puzzled me at first, but then it got me angry. Angry at the lawsuit filed against her by Bailey Point Investment. They're the group who are developing the land right behind her home on Jonesville Road, property that has belonged to her family since the Civil War. The 147-unit plan has been approved and is well on its way. But Bailey Point says Wright is blocking their progress. They filed a lawsuit saying parts of her home are on their property and they have the paperwork to prove it. In fact, they're asking for damages. Wright already paid to move a shed and a satellite dish, but the developers say her porch is still on land they own. See, I'm at least, what, 12 feet away from the borderline, which is right there. Actually, neighbors helping her say it's 22 feet away from the road that Bailey Point built. Josephine says this isn't about a porch. The developers made offers to buy her land, and she claims when she turned them down, they started harassing her. And I don't want to say anything that can be used against me, but I think they're unscrupulous and greedy. And they want nothing but all the property they can get their hands on. Kelly LeBlanc is part of the newly formed Jonesville Preservation Society. She and her fellow neighbors, many of whom are related and original islanders, have garnered support from Hilton Head residents and town leaders, all to make sure the island's past here and everywhere will be protected in the future. We can't change the zoning. 
the, the town is looking very carefully at all of the approvals that they're going through. So the town is really working with us in terms of like it's got to be to the letter of the law. In the meantime, Wright has a lawyer of her own now and is ready to fight for her property and her history. And what do you want? I want to just keep my property and let them leave me alone. Andrew Davis, WSCV News 3, on your side. Yeah, look, somebody say, you got to fight, you got to fight. Now, a couple of the other videos, because Bakari Sellers is now representing her. But I saw it because uh, Tyler Perry has reached out to her and said, whatever you need, I got you. Sometimes the devil don't know who you're messing with. They, they didn't start a GoFundMe. Everybody want to help mother out. And y'all, y'all need to put your hand in her direction and say, Lord, give me her skin. <laughs> you wish you looked that good in 93. I don't mean some of y'all wish we looked that good now, Jesus. Stand fast. In the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free, be not entangled with the yoke of bondage. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold of eternal life. So sometimes, y'all, you got to fight for what's yours. That's my subject for this Independence Weekend. You have to fight for what's yours. The will of God is not automatic. Now, now we know that as Christians, from the time we receive Jesus Christ, we have eternal life, right? John 3.15 says, Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. If you're a believer, you have eternal life. Uh, Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So eternal life is a gift. We see that. It comes through us believing. It comes with Jesus you get eternal life. And yet, one of the scriptures that I read as our foundational scripture from 1 Timothy 6 and 12 says, fight the good fight of faith and lay hold of eternal life. So even though it's a gift, even though it comes with faith, you still got to fight for it. Now, I wish that wasn't the case, but it is what it is. You're going to have to fight to have eternal life. And eternal life in this context, it does not mean the same as we think of everlasting life, life that never ends. Eternal life means the God kind of life. The life of nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. The kind of life that represents heaven on earth. That kind of life. The, 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 the kind of life that the will of God of what is in heaven and not in heaven is in your life or not in your life, representing a reflection of God's will for your life as established by what's going on in heaven. And so you have to understand that there are spiritual, there's a spiritual reality, but it's also a natural reality. So we have to take the spiritual reality and make that change our natural reality. We have to trust in the spiritual realities until it is manifested in our natural life. Hebrews 11 and 3 says, by faith we understand. Everybody say, by faith we understand. Some things you got to stop trying to understand with your natural mind. Stop, stop trying to go to school and understand it. Okay? You know, some, some, you know I was talking to, I was talking to a, 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 a fellow bishop in the Lord's church. Who recently went to seminary and, and he was talking to me now about now he understands because they talk about about you know that you don't want to call God he because you know God is genderless and uh, and that's offensive to women and the LGBTQ plus uh, so we can't, can't say father God anymore uh, I saw I, I wish I I, I I thought about showing this then I said I won't even want to give it that much play but I saw uh, 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 like a, a female um, some kind of minister lead, leading the people into a confession saying mother God who had um, who who uh, anyway basically switching stuff to, to show like same sex God and same sex marriage and, and all this kind of stuff and uh 
to me, it's crazy to go to school to find out what not to believe. I mean, if I go to school, he's going to help me, not, not take away what I, what I already have. And so uh, he, 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 was, he, was, he was explaining to me, well, you know, God is, God is you know, uh, we can't really say he's a father. But you need to understand, uh, it, it is true that God is not flesh and blood like us. So when God, in order for God to make man in his image, he had to have characteristics of male and characteristics of female. Because we both came out of God. The same God who says I'm your father also refers to himself as the many-breasted one. Okay? I'll quote it all the time. Jesus says when he tells, looks over Jerusalem, he said, how often would I have taken you like a mother hen does her chicks? So I'm a comforting as a mother, mother would comfort a child. So, so that, those things don't create mysteries, but you have to understand that there's heavenly reality, spiritual reality, and there's natural reality. But we have to believe God until what's in heaven shows up in our lives. One of the promises that God gave his people in, in Exodus, he said, if you obey and serve me, I'll make your days like heaven on earth. Glory to God. So we have to appropriate and bring the past spiritual reality into natural possession. In other words, you have to fight just like that 93-year-old woman down in Hilton Head. So I'm going to fight for what's mine. She said they offered her money and she said, I ain't selling it. This has been in my family since the Civil War. We hold it on to it. Now, now the other one, the, the, if, if you go look at it, the, the, there's another press conference with, with, with Bakari and it got all, all these folks, folks around it. I, I think they say something like she got 40 grandchildren, uh, 50, uh, 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 50 great grandchildren and something like 10 great great grandchildren. Okay. And so, and so she said, she said, I want this for my children and my children's children. See, sometimes you got to have a vision that goes beyond you. If, if it's just about you, you might give up too quick. But this is bigger than you. <laughs> this is about your family. This is about seed. This is about well, not just what the devil is trying to take from you. He, what he wants to take also from your seed and from your family. You have to fight for what's yours. Second Peter 1, 3 and 4. It reminds us that his divine power, God's divine power, has given us, has given, already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. How does it come? Through the knowledge of him. I'm not going to know what God has for me until I get to know him better. He's given me all, all things according to his divine power that pertain to life and godliness. To my natural life and my spiritual life through the knowledge of him who has called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises. Now he says he's given it to us. Then he starts talking about promises. He's given us exceeding great and precious promises that through these, through these what? Through these exceeding great and precious promises, we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Let me break this down. He said God has given these things to us and then given us promises that we can have it. You can't have it if you don't know the promise. That's why there's so many people who still fight, every, who, 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 who y'all, y'all start putting creases in your seat when, when, when I say it's the will of God for you to be rich. Because your, your poverty mindset can't grab that. Because people have taught you for so long that something's wrong with money. Ain't nothing wrong with money. It's wrong with people, what pe- people do wrong stuff with money. Money is neutral. I can build a church or I can buy weed. Right in this section. Okay? Money, is, money didn't do it. It's the choices that you make with money. Money is neutral. Money is not good and money is not bad. It's what you do with it. But you got to get your mind renewed. But just the same thing applies to healing. There's some people say, well, you know, you all ever hear people say, well, we all got to die with something. I'm sure there's nobody in this church connected to me or sat under my teacher or preacher for any time who if the doctors come and say to you, well, you got stage four cancer, and I'll give you 60 days that you will look at, look at them and say, well, we all got to die with something. No, not in this church. You know, the devil is a liar. I'm going, I shall live and not die. Oh, I'm, I'm going to church. I'm calling up the prayer line. I'm going to be on the prayer line before I start. 
You ain't going to be jumping on 615. The reason why I know because we end with like 230, something like that. We start with like 130. Y'all, y'all be coming on eventually. But, but if, if you heard that, you're going to fight. You're going to say, no, I'm not just going to accept that. Jesus, he was wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquity, the chest tied on my peace upon him, and with his stripes I am healed. I, I receive, you will start confessing and believing God for your healing because you know that it's a promise. So it's through the promises that we become partakers of what heaven has for us. It's by believing in the promises. Now I've got to fight for what was promised me. Jesus told us to pray, thy will be done in earth even as it's in heaven. Heaven is established. But you will have to pray and to appropriate it here on your life on earth. He also tells us in Matthew 16, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loose in heaven. But it translates to that say, whatever we bind on earth has to be what's bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is what's already loosed in heaven. So when we bind and we loose, we are just declaring God's promises be fulfilled in my life despite these natural circumstances. So I bind sickness, I lose heaven's healing. I bind poverty, I lose heaven's prosperity. Come on, I bind confusion, I lose heaven's peace on my life. Are you following me? You appropriate it in your life. Now, we often have to be reminded that as we celebrate as a country, the uh, the Declaration of Independence, which is what July 4th is about. Even though it was originally uh, written and, and accepted on January 2nd, on, on rather July 2nd, 1776, it was ratified on July 4th, 1776. But it's important to note that the Declaration of Independence was not the date that the colonized states of America became independent of, British, of the British Empire. Let me say it again. July 4th, 1776 is not the date that the colonized states of America became independent of British, of the British Empire, British rule and, Brit- and British tyranny. It was the day that the colonized states declared their independence. You didn't catch that. It's not the date that it happened. It's the date they declared it. And from the perspective of the British Empire, That declaration of independence was actually a declaration of war. You call it independence, we call it war. Because we ain't letting you go that easy. After the declaration, they had to fight for what they declared. You confess I'm healed, we're going to have to fight for your healing. You confess I'm rich, I'm going to have to fight for, for, for your prosperity. You confess my needs are met, I'm out of debt, I got plenty more to put in store. The devil going to fight you tooth and nail to take it back. But you still declare it anyway. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote in his 1963 letter from Birmingham jail, he wrote, and I quote, freedom is never given voluntarily by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. You must demand it. It, for it will not be given freely. Hmm. So you got to demand it. Even after you declare it, you got to demand it. So it's one thing to declare it. It's another thing to be willing to fight for what you have declared. Now, a lot, can I tell you, sometimes the declaring part is the easy part. It's the fighting for what you declare where the rubber meets the road. Because the devil says, take it back. Take it back. Take it back. You say I'm healed. The devil says, take it back. Take it. You, you say I'm out of debt. Take it back. No, no, no. Uh, all, all my children are going to serve God. Take it back. Take it back. And he will try everything in the natural to get you to take back what you declared. Joshua, the first chapter, verse 3 through 7, God tells Joshua, even as I think referred to it earlier in the service, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I've given you. So God's declaring that every place that the sole of your foot has tread upon, I've given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness of Lebanon unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, it's going to be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Can I tell you all, that's one of the theme scriptures of my life. I hope it will become yours too. Can you say this with me? There shall not any man be able to stand before me 
all the days of my life. As God was with Moses, he's going to be with me. Can I tell you, that, that scripture is enough right there to, to fight every battle you got. That scripture is enough right there to make every devil leave you alone. There's never going to be anybody going to be able to stop me. Again, can I tell you, seriously, y'all, when I, 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 was, I was having my phone up and I was looking at something, and then the, the, news, the news popped up, see, Supreme Court decision, overturning, overturning the affirmative action. It brought tears to my eyes. It literally brought tears to my eyes. It brought tears to my eyes because I know everybody don't know this scripture. You're not catching this. There's some people, if, 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 if the doors aren't open through legislation, they feel they'll never get in. They feel they're going to continue to be oppressed and discriminated against. But no man going to be able to stand before me all the days of my life. Come on now. I mean, whether, whether that's about race, whether that's about, about your gender as a female, well, you know, they, they, they're always trying to keep good women down. Listen, and, and you know, the interesting thing, y'all, well, I don't, don't want to get caught up in that. Let me keep on moving here because I'll, I'll, before I get caught up enough. But you have to know that God is for you. Come on, somebody say, God is for me. So he tells him, uh, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. I'm not going to fail you. I'm not going to forsake you. So be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. He said, but I'm telling you again, you have to be strong and you're going to have to be very courageous that you obey to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, command you. Don't turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. The reason why God told him he's going to have to be strong and be courageous because he's going to have to fight. But he's God giving him the outcome of the fight before he ever has the fight. <laughs> he establishes the ending at the beginning. He said, now go ahead and fight because no man going to be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I would, Go ahead and fight. You're going to get all the land. You're going to divide it among the people. Go ahead and fight because I've already given it to you, but you have to fight to make what I've declared over your life a reality in your life. Are you all with me here? So throughout the scripture, there's this pattern of declaring and then fighting for what's been declared. Numbers 13. When the, when the spies came back from spying out the land, when Moses sent the spies there while under his administration. Numbers 13, verse 30, Joshua, who ends up being the succeeding leader, and Caleb, the only ones who still believed God and trusted that they could have had it 40 years before, but Numbers 13 and 30 says, and Caleb, the, the people, they were talking about, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's a good land, and this is the fruit, but it's, man, there's some big jokers up in there. Man, it's a, I mean, they're going to have us for lunch. I mean, yeah, I mean, the reason why the food's so big, because they're so big, you know? And, and, and I, I don't know, I don't see how we could, you know, we, we're small people, and, and you know, we're just coming out of slavery. We don't know anything about fighting. They start making all the excuses, Numbers 13 and 30, and Caleb still the people. Shut up! Still the people before Moses said, let's go up at once. Sometimes, stop overthinking. <laughs> let's go up at once. Stop trying to figure this out in the natural. Let's go up at once. Stop trying to get yourself together first. Let's do it. Let's go up at one. Stop trying to get all your natural preparation in place. You'll never be able to prepare for the life God has for you. It's going to take faith. Let's go up once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they're stronger than us. And now... Forty years later, we pick up in Joshua, the 14th chapter, verse 9, Caleb held on to his confession. Not only did Caleb hold on to his confession, he was willing to fight then. Look at your neighbor and say, don't lose your fight. Boy, that's a message right there. That's a me Don't lose your fight. Because sometimes you can have your fight when you're younger and get older and say, that's all right. Nah, I'm too old. I'm, nah. I don't even want it no more. I don't, I don't have to have no house. You know, um, and we, we, we can't relate to it as much down south here because most of us really endeavor down south to be homeowners. 
but up north is not the same. Okay, people will rent their whole lives. They have family members. They've never known anybody to own the house. And they will boast about how great the apartment is. Okay? And, can, and continue to throw money away. And never start building wealth. Because the way to start building wealth in America is through home or land ownership. You understand me? So that's, that's, where, that's where it starts. Um, but I've heard people say, I don't want no house. And the reason why they say they don't want a house because they don't want the maintenance that goes with the house. They don't want mowing the lawn that goes with the house. They don't want to have to fix stuff when something going with the house. You, you can see some people got a house and they, it looked like they didn't want the house. <laughs> because there's work with the promises. I said there's work with the promises. So here Caleb says, Joshua 14, verse 9 through 12, this is 40 years later. I'm reading the New King James Version. Moses, he said, Moses swore on that day 40 years ago, saying, Surely the land where your foot is trodden is going to be your inheritance for you and your children forever, because you have wholly or completely followed the Lord my God. Now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive for these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses. I had a prophetic word, and I believe God's promise. It was 45 years ago, but I realized that the promises of God don't have an expiration date. It only expires if you stop believing. Let me say that again. The promises of God don't have an expiration date. It only expires if you stop believing. And so he says, the Lord has kept me alive and I'm here. He says, uh, he's, he kept me alive for 45 years ever since the Lord gave that word through Moses. He said, now here I am. 85 years old and I'm as strong today as the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, I can just pitch him. Come on, what you got? Just as my strength was then, so my strength is now for war to go out and to come in. He said, and when I go fight, I ain't gonna die, I'm coming back. <laughs> to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and the cities were great and fortified. And it may be that the Lord will be with me and I'm going to drive them out as the Lord said. Caleb said, I'm still willing to fight for what God promised me. And, and God understands your weariness. That's why he encourages us. He said, don't be weary in well-doing. For you shall reap and faint not. That's why he gives us scripture. Those who wait on the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. He knows that sometimes our strength gets weak. You can still mount up. You can still uh, run and w walk and not faint. You can still run and not be weary. But you're going to have to keep believing God and not give up on the promises. And don't lose your fight. Look at your neighbor again and say, don't lose your fight. So there was confession. And then Caleb said, I'm willing to fight for what I've, what I've confessed. Gideon. Gideon. Judges the sixth chapter. Verse 12. The angel of the Lord comes to Gideon. And Gideon is hiding. He's hiding from the oppressors. He has a little bit of food. And he's trying to keep that because the oppressors were taking everything that they grew. Taking all their harvest. And he's hiding as he's, uh, as he's threshing wheat. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said unto him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. He's hiding from the oppressors. Trying to keep his little bit of wheat. From the enemy getting it. And God says, the Lord is with you, you mighty man. Now, now, come on. God calls him a mighty man, but he looked like mighty mouse. You got to see yourself through what God says about you and not how you feel about yourself. You got to bring your life up to the level of what God said about you. And not what your society said about you. Not what your race says about you. Not what, your, not, not what the economy says about you. Not what statistics say about you. I am, say it with me, I am who God says I am. I can do what God said I can do. 
I can have everything God said I can have. The Lord is with you. You mighty man of valor. But watch this. And the reason why the Lord told him he's a mighty man of valor because he was going to have to go and be valiant with that valor. He says, he dropped down to verse 14, the Lord looked and said, go in this thy might. You, you, you got what you need. Under all that fear, there's courage. Under all that doubt, there's faith. Come on now. Just get rid of the doubt. Get rid of the, the, the unbelief. Get rid of the circumstances. Get rid of the history. Get rid of circumstances. I've given you the spirit of faith. My God. Look at somebody say, it's in me. It's in me. It's in me. It's in me. See, sometimes, sometimes you just need a little more squeezing on you. Because when, when, some, when, when you squeeze hard enough, what's in you is going to come out. Come on, if you got cussing in you, let somebody step on your toe, even though you ain't cussing a long time, up! Some more cussing will come out. The test, many times, will show what's really in us. He says, go in this your might. You're going to save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent you? In other words, God already been talking to him. In other words, y'all, after you confess it, you got to go possess it. After you confess, you got to go possess it. Possessing often requires a fight. Possessor often requires a fight. I, 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 I told you, I put it in my notes to so make sure I tell you again. I told you about, about, about my marble story. Okay? Not that I remember the bully's name, but his name was Paul Reeves. Okay? I'm about 10, 11 years old. I don't know if Paul Reeves is still alive or not. Okay? But I'm about 10 years old, and we were out there playing marble, and Paul Reeves took all my marbles. And I went upstairs crying. And my sister... One of my sisters who passed away, she was like seven years old. I think she's about seven years old or something like that. I was born on her birthday, so she was my favorite sister. I was her favorite sibling. I was born on her birthday. And um, she said, what's wrong with you? I said, somebody took my mom. She said, who took him? I said, Paul Reeves. She said, well, we going to get him. I said, no, he can have him. <laughs> See, that's how some of y'all are. The devil will take your stuff and you're like, you cry, but he can have it. Because you know in order to get it, it's going to require a fight. Look, 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 somebody say, don't let him have it. Don't let him have it. My sister said, oh, no, you're you going you to go get these marbles. And I went down there. I said, give me my marbles. He said, take them. And I went to take next day. I know we, we rumbling. We rumbling. We rumbling. But my sister was there. And, we were, and so we fight and we were on the ground and, and he'd get on top of me and I'd get on top of him. But every, every time he got on top of me, my sister would flip me back over. <laughs> then I'll go. He'd get on top of my sister. She wouldn't fight for me. She just made sure I stayed on top. Can I tell you, if you will fight, God makes sure you stay on top. He said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only. Don't be scared to fight. God I'm going to make sure you stay on top. But you got to be willing to fight. So the devil will continue to bully you if you're unwilling to fight. So how do you fight for what's yours? Three things I want to give you. Number one, you got to keep your head in the fight. You got to keep thinking straight. Proverbs 23 and 7, for as he thinketh, so is he. You are you, how you think. Thinking is the process of how you think. You, they got something, when, when, when you study different, different philosophies or different views of, on particular disciplines, they'll say school of thought. Okay? And so the, the school of thought you come from matters, y'all. I'm very serious about it. I come from a school of thought of faith that's based in faith. That's, that's why we kept on going, and, that, and now we're getting ready to occupy this building that was built at the, as we're coming out of a, out of a pandemic. Come on now, because I believe in God before me. And, and, and I really believe that sometimes the more odds that are against you, the more opportunity God has to show himself strong. And, and see, my whole life is a living testimony. I, I, I started thinking about this, you know, seriously, y'all, you know, uh, uh, you know because, because now we got access to so many people and sound bites and all this kind of stuff. You know, I mean, I, mean, I, I don't consider myself to be the most oratorically skilled person. Okay. Now, there are people who can, who can run circles around me in terms of the analogies and the way they talk and all the kind of stuff. But one thing, I know the word. And, and, and I'm being hung. And what I really, what I do, see, a lot of people teach from the word, I teach the word. Amen. That's the truth, y'all. 
They take one scripture and then it's all in. A lot of people teach from the word and I teach the word. And, but I have no problem with that. Paul said when I came to you, I didn't come with enticing words of man wisdom. He said that your faith will not stand in my articulation, in my speech, but your faith will stand in the power of God. God's word is powerful. When you forget how I said it, just go back to what was said. <laughs> Come on now. When you forget how I said it, everything I say ain't going to be tweetable, but it's in the book. And so it's how you think. Your, your school of thought you come from, it matters. Thinking is everything. First Peter 1, 13 and 14. Before you get in the fight, 1 Peter 1, 13 says, therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Gird, get your head in the fight. Be sober. Rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conform yourself to the former lust as in your ignorance. That, that verse from the New Living Translation says, prepare your minds for action. Get your head in the fight and exercise self-control. That word sober, it means to be clear thinking. You know, pe people just trying to stretch every, everything now and everybody into spiritualism, not recognizing a lot of that. Do y'all realize demons are spirits? Everybody talking about, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. Oh, you're demon possessed? I was watching something, I'm not going to mention names, but some of you, you know, a, a, a noted, noted celebrity who did, did this trip to Africa. Then he also watched it for their 50th birthday or whatever. And they went and showed it, and then they're going to Africa, going to Nigeria, and going to, going to Ghana, and, they, and, they, and they're going to the, the God of this, and the God of that, and, and, and God of our ancestors. Listen, if it, if it wasn't God, and if it wasn't Jesus, we got to let that go. Stop worshiping your color. No, I'm very serious about that. And some people think anything, if it's historical, and, and you know, that now a, a lot, a, a, that, come on now, that a lot of our people there, they, 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 had to, they had to renounce all of that stuff. And here y'all are picking it up because some celebrity is doing it and singing about it and twerking about it and putting it in their videos, these different gods. You, you, you need to know that we are spirit beings. He said, gird up the laundry of mind, be sober. That word sober, y'all, it means clear thinking. And so now people are working weed into their spirituality. You know, help me, you know, weed, you know, you know, it's from the earth, you know what I'm saying? And you know, and when I smoke weed, you know, it, 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 it helps me feel closer, you know, to the God, of, to, to the creation. You know what I'm saying? No, you just high. Period. Ain't no spiritual, you just high. And the Bible says be sober. You can't be sober and be high. At least 50, I looked at it, at least 15 times in the scripture, the Bible says be sober. What's the problem with alcohol? Too much of it causes you not to be sober. The Bible said, be not drunk with wine wherein is, is excess. And so you got to keep your head in the game. Some of y'all too broke to get high. You need to keep your head. You need to be making money, not losing money. Prepare your minds for action. Exercise self-control. Put all your hope in, in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't look, look at this. 1 Peter 1 and 14. New Living Translation. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. Come on. I, I believe we, if we know better, we ought to what? We ought to do better. So sober means clear thinking. People who are not sober get taken advantage of. You're more likely to get robbed if you're not sober. Ladies, you know this, you're more likely to get sexually assaulted or raped if you're not sober. 
So 1 Peter 5, I'm talking about keeping your head in the game. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, be sober, be vigilant. Vigilant means persistent, having courage, but you got to be sober first, clear thinking, because the devil, your adversary, the devil, he walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Who he's looking to devour? Somebody who's high. Somebody whose head is not in the game. Somebody who's walking through life, not realizing that life is a, is a landmine. That any moment the devil got traps and snares set for you and you just can't be walking through life foolishly, just dating anybody and sleeping with anybody and going anywhere without thinking, Lord, you need to order my steps and wreck my path. God, I need to be in the right place at the right time with the right people. God, I want, I, I want to be know that when I'm here, I'm in your will. When I go there, I'm in your will. I just can't go someplace because my friends are going. I just can't go somewhere because my friends are moving there. No, I've got to be in the will of God because that's where my my protection is that's where my covering is somebody said be sober, be sober. feel that the Lord to remind you of this I often said this I haven't told you this in a long time this is for somebody you got to be led by the spirit not driven by your circumstances be led by the spirit of God not driven by your circumstances so circumstances so yeah people well circumstances the reason why I did that because it was just so bad no 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 you always got a choice be led by the spirit not driven by your circumstances secondly if you're going to fight you got to use your weapons look at somebody say use your weapons 2 Corinthians 10 4 and 5 the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God through pulling down a stronghold. When it says carnal, they're not natural. They're not going to be Uzis and rocks and, and arrows and, and spears and, and, all, and guns and knives. No, they're not natural, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And watch this. What does the first weapon, what does the weapon mainly do? It casts down arguments. Traditional King James says imaginations Arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now catch this. You have to use weapons to pull down anything that makes you doubt God. Use the weapon to counter every thought that will tell you God's not going to do it. Use the weapon to counter every thought that says God doesn't love you. Use the weapon to pull down every thought that says, no, you're never going to get it. No, you're never going to get it. That no, I'm going to have it. Whoever asks, receives. Come on. Pastor Marshall, but for those of you who have been here on Wednesday nights or tuning in, she's she been telling us the last couple of weeks, this is the season for the big ask. Ask big. Come on. If you're going to ask God to do something, come on. If, if, if Bill Gates came in here and said, you know, the Lord told me, I, I saw Bishop Bailey, he was building this building, I saw it on, on, on YouTube, and I just come here, and the Lord just told me to ask you for anything you want. I ain't going to ask him to pay for the fountain. <laughs> well, you got 10,000? No, no, no. We can, I have 17 million. So we can walk in there debt free. Why? Because we say, well, he got it like that. Look at your name and say, God got it like that. <laughs> My God. So if you're going to ask God, ask big. Ask him something that's worth him listening not something you can do on yourself or by yourself and anything that God tells you to do what God requires it requires God so weapons of our way well, not mighty uh, not carnal pulling down strongholds casting down those arguments imagination every high thing that exalts itself that tries to counter what you really know about God bringing the, every thought bringing those thoughts bringing those thoughts so my thinking got to be right. And the first, one of the first weapons, I got, to, I got to use the weapon to get my thinking right. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. In other words, you got to pull down contrary thoughts in your own mind. But now, the more I looked at this, y'all, as much as we talk the, the weapons, when you really look at the spiritual weapons of a believer, we only got two weapons. Okay? We got two weapons, and those two weapons are the word and prayer. Okay? Somebody said, well, what about the whole arm of God? That's defensive. 
They're all defensive. Breastplate of righteousness, feet shot with the preparation of gospel for peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation. All those are to defend us. Are y'all with me? Against the attacks of the enemy. We only have two offensive weapons to go against the devil. And they are the word and prayer. Even our food is supposed to be sanctified with those two weapons. First Timothy 4 and 5, our food is sanctified by the word of God and what? And prayer. Everybody say the word and prayer. So y'all, this is this, this not, this not hard to remember. I said this is not hard to remember. You've got to be reading the word, confessing the word, and you've got to have a prayer life if you're going to fight. If you're not reading the word, declaring the word, knowing the word, and if you don't have a prayer life, you are already defeated. Those are the people that the devil comes after. People not in the word. People don't know the word. People don't believe the word. People doubt in the word. And people who have no prayer life. Those are your counteroffensive weapons against the devil. Even as a man of God. My primary responsibility in order to fight for you is to give myself to word and prayer. Acts the sixth chapter, verse four. When they got ready, when there was complaining, it's complaining in right direction. They were complaining in the church that was born on the day of Pentecost. As long as you got people, somebody gonna be dissatisfied. Amen. Whether you got two children or five children or one child, the child ain't always satisfied. One, 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 one of those this weekend, you know, I keep, and I, and I keep, I, I told my wife, I said, how come I, why don't I just pop them the way I pop my own kids? You know, know why? Because I keep thinking there's somebody I didn't raise who, that, see, they're going to have problems. Yeah, but, you know, really, that's, that's the deal. You know, these are both of you know, but, but, you know, uh, but they're going to be mad at me. Huh? Okay. But the, but these kids, they'll, they'll be obstinate. No, I, I, no. Who are you talking to? Heaven, no, you didn't just say no to me. Look at Dave, say, he said heaven, he said heaven. So people were complaining. And the disciples, God gave them strategy. He said, listen, I want you to choose our seven men who fill with the Holy Ghost and wisdom and who hate covetousness. They have to have the Holy Ghost to be led by the Spirit of God. They need to be people of wisdom, some discretion of knowing how to do things, to have some skill about how to ministrate. He said, and then also they have to hate covetousness. They can't be doing this for money or selfish gains. He said, and let them be over this waiting of the table, making sure the pastoral care is taken care of and everyone's taken care of. He said, Acts 6 and 4, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. In order for me to fight for you, I got to spend time in prayer and time in the word. Amen? So, let, again, let's, let's break this down some more. Those two weapons, the word of God and prayer. The word of God, Ephesians 6, 17. He says, take the helmet of salvation. That's the last of the armor of God that he mentions. He said, and then the sword of the spirit which is what the word so our sword is the word our sword is the word and the word is our sword that's what we fight with stop cussing folks out <laughs> you don't know me I got, a, I got a sharp tongue stop stop cussing folks out okay the word is your sword Ephesians 6, 17 and 18 says, and praying always with all prayer. So we got the sword, right? And then praying with all prayer, which means all kinds of prayer and supplication, which is intercession in the spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So I need the word and I need to have a prayer life. And y'all, I believe the times are intensifying. Amen. I said the times are intensifying. Maybe that, maybe folks knowing that since the Supreme Court don't care nothing about y'all, maybe we'll have a, more of a prayer life now. 
Maybe you're going to really, really realize that your children need to have the favor of God in their life because their skin color may not be an advantage for them. Maybe you're going to start binding and loosing. Maybe you will start putting some money aside. Oh, y'all don't like me now. Maybe you'll start doing some natural things as well. Hebrews 4 and 12, again, the word of God. For the word of God, New King James, is living. Everybody say it's alive. It's alive. These are not merely words on a page like a good novel or fiction book. This is the living, breathing word of God. It's life to all them that find it, the scripture says, and health to all your flesh. If you spend time in it, it will elevate your life. It has power to ward off circumstances. It has power to make demons leave. This is alive. Somebody say it's alive. It's alive. It's the living word of God. It's living, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword or any other sword, piercing even the division of the soul and spirit and joints and marrows, and as a discerner of the thoughts and tents of the heart. What this is saying, if you get in the word, you, confusion will leave. You know, life seems like it's so hard. You know, life, life can be very hard. You got so many decisions to make. And do I go here? Do I go there? What, do I move here? Do I move there? Do I major in this, major in that? How do I, find, how do I handle my finance? How, can I tell you, the word of God is a discerner. The word of God will give you wisdom and strategy for your life. Live by the principles of the word. Listen to me. I told you this over. When you don't know what to do, do the word. I don't know what to do. I'm going to do the word. Well, I can't. Well, they, they did something such to me. And, and, and I, I, don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I'm, I'm going to do something. And you hear the word says, avenge not yourselves. Love your enemies. Now, I want, that ain't what word I want to hear right now. When you don't know what to do, do the word. The word is going to bring about results in your life. The word is going to make everything turn out the way God wants it to turn out. I know you're, listen to me, y'all. I know you're in financial trouble, but do the word. Don't get mad at me. But God has made me a multimillionaire now, made us. Multimillionaire. Used to be a millionaire. Multi, I checked it recently. I'm a multimillionaire. Don't get mad. But I remember in the early days, I got ready to file bankruptcy. Couldn't, couldn't pay our bills. And I got ready to file bank, bankruptcy. And as I'm getting ready to file bankruptcy, I'm starting to read. I'm reading about what, what I now call biblical economics or stewardship or financial principle, or biblical financial principle. And I came across a guy named, by the name of Larry Burkett, who's going to be with the Lord now. And I read this book that said that Christians shouldn't file bankruptcy. Uh huh. What what the Bible say about that? It shouldn't file bankruptcy. Okay, and you know, and then I'm I'm not trying to put anybody in the combination. Okay, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about how my my strategy. And so you know, uh, uh, and, well people say, well, but the Bible got the year jubilee. Y'all heard that right? That was done voluntarily. But by the creditor, released them. Okay, so it really doesn't equate. Okay? And so I got felt just because I had all these bills, didn't know how I was going to pay them, and they were stressing me out, <laughs> and I'm tired of these folks calling me. And I'm tired, of, I'm tired of changing my voice every time they call. No Herberto here. Herbert? No Herbert here. See, some of, y'all, some of y'all don't know how blessed you are now. Now, now you got cell phones that says spam. I ain't answering that. <laughs> we had no warnings. <laughs> Back when I owned us, no warning, no call ID. I know some of y'all can't even relate. No call ID. You just pray. I hope this ain't my mama. <laughs> it might be my mama. Let me answer the phone. Uh, this is Herbert Benzie, GMAC. No Herbert here. And I read, and based upon the scripture, I teach it to you all the time. The wicked borrow and pay not again. The wicked borrow and pay not again. Oh, no, man, nothing but. And so I said, God, I'm not going to file bankruptcy. God, I'm going to trust you. 
And I, I love, I love to say, once I said that, the next day, uh, 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 $30,000 showed up in my account. That ain't how it worked. I had to walk it out. But as I look back over my life and I look all the different choices I could have made, when I made the decision to do the word, it worked out the best for my life. Look at somebody say, do the word. That wasn't to put anybody in condemnation. I'm just telling you the decisions that I made early on in my life. I, I, I have to make decisions like that regarding this ministry. Okay? All, all types of things. When, when we moved out of, out of uh, from St. Andrew's Road, when, when, when we moved out of, not St. Andrew's, uh, down on 3801 River Drive, we got the place on... on uh, St. Andrew's Road, we were, I had another year and two months in the lease. I told the owner, I said, listen, we've outgrown the place um, and, and uh, you know, I got another building now, we got to move. He's like, I don't care nothing about you move. You owe this money, $2,500 a month. Like, oh, well, I ain't paying that. No, I paid $2,500 a month for a building we didn't occupy for one year and two months. Why? Because I signed the lease. Because I saw, I just, I did the right thing. And we have never had any issues paying our bills. Look at somebody say, do the word, do the word. Let me move on. Number two, the, the word, number two is prayer life. Ephesians 6, 18, praying with all prayer. Praying with all prayer. Praying with all prayer. Praying with all prayer. Pastor Marshall has been teaching from this in 2 Chronicles 20. Verse 4, it tells us that Judah gathered themselves together. Three nations have come against them as confederates, the Bible says. And they are against Judah, God's people. Three different nations came up against them. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. They, asked, they got themselves together to do what? To ask God to help them. Let, let, let me make this plain. They had a prayer meeting. If you get together and ask God to help, what you doing? You're having a prayer meeting. They called a prayer meeting. And then verse 12, it says, oh, our God, don't, won't you judge them? For we have no might against this great company. God, I have no strength in my own. I, I, we can't fight in our own. We have no might against them that come against us. Neither we, do we know what to do. But what we do know is our eyes are on you. When you don't know what to do, keep your eyes on Jesus. When you don't know what to do, keep looking up. Verse 13, and all Judah stood before the Lord. Listen to me. The whole family got together. This month we're going to be focusing on family, talking about family matters in our Bible study. It says, and all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, with their wives, with their children. Listen, some of y'all are going through stuff. You need to get everybody in the house together. I'm serious about this. When I went full-time in, went full-time in ministry, by default, because I got fired, Chandler's 10, Tyler's 8, Daniel's 7, Kendra's 5. I got the whole family together. I said, Daddy's not going to be working for Sydney anymore. We need $3,000 a month. That was the bare minimum. I wish I only need $3,000 a month now. We need $3,000 a month. And I'll never forget Chandler. That didn't mean nothing to the young. Chandler said, Dad, $3,000 $3, in one year? God can do that. I'm saying, I know we could do 3,000 in a year. But we need this to happen every month. But we got the whole family together and we prayed. Some of you, you're going through things. You need to get everybody in this house together. The power of corporate prayer that started in your house. It started with the son, it says there, with their little ones, their wives and their children. And then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. And he said, verse 15, listen unto me, Judah you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he said to the king, Thus saith the Lord, don't you be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. Don't care. I don't care how big it looks. I don't care how many there are. Don't, for the battle is not yours but God's. Look at this. The battle is not yours but God. But you still got to show up for the fight. Look, somebody say, show up for the fight. Sometimes God just wants to show up to the fight because he wants an audience when he beats the devil down. He needs somebody to go back and listen. Let me tell you, God did that thing. Won't he will? When he will he won't? I'm telling you, I didn't have to do nothing. I showed up and God just went to performing. And this one started doing that one. I said, you better go ahead, God. He said, you won't need to fight your battle. He said, but this is what I want you. I want you to stand still. That means internally. See the salvation of the Lord. 
Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. Show up for the fight, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, they fell before the Lord. And they were worshiping the Lord. They worshiped the Lord. Sometimes you got to get a picture of what you see God doing in your life and just start worshiping. Oh, God, I thank you for bringing me through this thing. God, I see myself sharing this thing. Father, I see Bishop Bailey read my praise report about how you brought me out of this situation. And God, I just want to worship you. I want to praise you in advance because I know you're going to bring me through. I know you're going to bring me out. I know you're going to fight this battle but I thank you Lord that I got the courage just to keep on going. Keep on showing up. Show up for the fight. Don't run with with my head held down. Don't put my tail between my legs. I'm going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Last thing I want to tell you. Last thing I want to tell you. In order to fight for you, you got to go after it. Look somebody say go after it. Go after means you got to pursue Come on, you, you got the word, you got a prayer life, now go after it. You're going to have to go after it to get it. That's a word for somebody. You have to go after it, forget it, to get it. Everything not going to come to you. There's some stuff you're going to have to go after. 1 Corinthians 9, 24, it said, do you not know that those who run in a race run all, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain. Run to obtain. Run to win. Not just exist, not just survive, not just stay alive. Run to win. Look, somebody say, I'm in it to win it. Listen, y'all, I refuse to be average. I refuse to have the average family. I refuse to have the average church. I refuse to have average money. I refuse to live in an average house. I just believe that God got something greater for me. I just believe I'm not supposed to be average. I believe I'm running to win. I want everything that God said I'm supposed to have. When I read it in the word, I say, oh, that's mine too. I'm on, I don't care if other folks believe it or not. I don't care if other folks want it or not. I want everything that God has for me. Look at somebody say, go get it, go get it, go get it. Philippians 3, he said, Paul said, I haven't already obtained. Now God has blessed me. I've come a long way. I got a great testimony, but I'm not yet mature. I'm not perfected. So I'm pressing on and that I can lay hold of that which Christ has laid hold of me. In other words, God saved me to give me something. God saved me to bring something to my life that he could not get to me if I didn't give my life to him. But since I'm, since I'm living for him now, I'm expecting everything that he wants to give me. I want to apprehend that for which I've been apprehended. Verse 48, so I'm pressing. Everybody say press. Press means you're going to have to push past people. You're going to have to push past things. You're going to have to push past feelings. Listen to me. You're going to have to push past grief. You're going to have to push past depression. God got something for me on the other side of this. I know you didn't see yourself going through this. I know you didn't want them to die. I know you wasn't expecting a divorce. But God said you got to keep on pressing. The fact that I kept you alive. I knew you were going to go through this. And I still got a blessing with your name on it. I still got some stuff I want to give you. I still got places for you to go. I want you to keep on pressing despite what you're feeling. I want you to keep on pressing despite how other people are talking about you. I want you to keep on pressing despite other folks trying to stumble you and and make you fall. I want you to keep on pressing because I got more for you. Look at somebody and say, God's got more for you. Oh my God. I press. I got to go get it. I wish you would just come to me. Yes, I believe something's going to fall in my lap, but everything's going to fall in my lap. There's some stuff I'm going to have to go after. Then the final thing the Lord wants me to tell you is for some of you, get it back. Look, somebody say, get it back. Some of you, some of you, some of you, this is about your fourth time in church since the pandemic. You need to get it back. You need to get your zeal back. You need to get your passion back. Get it back. Some of you lost some stuff and you let the devil take some stuff. But I'm telling you here on the first Sunday of the second half of 2023, go get it back. Stuff you lost in the first half of this year, go get it back. Get your fight back. Get your thrill back. Get your joy back. Get your gusto back. Get your mojo back. Come on, get your groove back. Whatever you got to get back, just tell the devil, I'm not just going to concede and let you go riding off with my stuff. I want everything I'm supposed to have. I'm going to go get it back. Look, somebody say, get it back. 
First Samuel 30, David shows up and they had taken his wife, take his kids, burn the camp down. And David, the first thing David says, I got to pray. He said, bring me the ephod, first Samuel 30 and 7. The ephod, which is, which is the prayer garment. And, Be- and Beatha brought the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord. Use that, that's the first weapon. He used the weapon of prayer. Saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered, pursue. Which means go after it. For you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover it all. That's a word for somebody for the rest of 2023. You're going to have to pursue. You're going to have to go after it. Go after it and get it back. So 1 Samuel 30, 18 says, so David listened to what the Lord told him. And along the way, God has somebody to help him. I don't have time to go there. But if you would just get to step in the direction that God wants you to go, my God, he'll raise up somebody to help you. All that 93-year-old woman did is say, I'm willing to fight. My God, and Tyler Perry heard about it and said, I'll get in a fight with you. You don't know who God going to use to help you fight. You don't know who God going to use to fund your dream. You don't know who God going to use to give you the resources. But God said, I just need you to get the step in. Make some steps towards it. Go after it and start pursuing it. Look at somebody say, help is on the way. My God, I don't know where it's coming from. But I just believe, God, that if you're willing to fight, God will send the help from your sanctuary. He'll send strength out of Zion. He'll raise up somebody somewhere. Use their power. Use their ability. Use their influence. Use their wisdom to help you. Help is on the way. My God, my God. Hallelujah. But you're going to have to go after it. And David went after it. He got his wives back. And there was nothing lacking. I declare you will have nothing lacking. Neither great nor small. Sons or daughters. Spoil or anything. Which they had taken from them. David recovered all. My God, I'm declaring. You will recover all. The devil will regret messing with you. The devil will regret mess with your family. The devil will regret mess with your finances. I declare that you shall recover all. everything God got for you. You want to get that and more. Somebody shout restore and more. Restore and more. Restore and more. Restoring to you the years that were destroyed by the locusts, by the palmer word. But God said, on the other side of your press, there is a blessing. On the other side of your tears, there is a blessing. On the other side of your depression, there's joy unspeakable. And full of glory. Come on, stir up the joy. 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 Rejoice and be glad. Because the Lord your God, He gonna give you the city. He gonna give you everything you need. Rejoice that you're gonna fight and keep everything. God said it's yours. Get back what was lost and get some more of what's ahead. Keep on pressing. Keep on believing. Keep on declaring. Keep on confessing. Keep on believing. Keep on declaring. Keep on confessing. Keep on believing. Keep on believing. God is faithful. God is is faithful he can't deny himself if he said it he will perform it if he spoke it he's gonna make it good somebody shall fight fight get your fight back 
get your sight back. Lift up your heads, O oh, ye gates. Be lifted up. The everlasting doors and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. He is the King. Lift up your heads. Throw your head back. I'm going to have it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to attain it. Devil, you are a liar. You mess with the wrong one. I'm going to fight for what's mine. I'm going to fight for my children. I'm going to fight for my healing. I'm going to fight for my destiny. I'm going to fight for my business. I'm going to fight for everything God has given me. And I'm not just going to lay down and let you take my stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. High five two people. Tell them keep on fighting. Keep on fighting. Keep on fighting. Keep on fighting. Every time you pray, you fight. Every time you pass, you fight. Every time you sow, you're fighting. Every time you worship, you're fighting. Every time you raise your hand, you're fighting. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. With my praise, with my hallelujah, with my thank you, Jesus, with my shout, with my dance, with my lead. This is how. Don't stop fighting. Don't stop fighting. Don't stop fighting. Make the devil quit. But you don't quit. Make the devil run. But you don't run. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Lord say no more running no more running stand flat footed square shouldered look that there in my eye and say say the Lord rebuke you I ain't scared of you if God is for me nobody can be against me Come on, when you pray in the spirit, you're fighting. I don't know what to say in the natural, but when I pray in the Holy Ghost, God releases angels on my behalf. Fight for what's yours. Fight for your confession. Fight for your declaration. Fight for your promise. Glory to the name of Hallelujah! 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 This word is for some college students who think about quitting and giving up. God said, "Fight! You gotta push on through. It ain't that hard that I can't help you. Stay in the fight. Stay in the fight. I don't care who gave up. I don't care who quit." I don't care who got their eyes on something else. I've given you a destiny. I've given you.
given you a promise. I've given you a picture of your future. Glory to the name of Jesus. 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 Don't get so tired you stop fighting. We fight till we win. We're not of those who draw back unto perdition but we believe to the saving of the soul